Icons, legends, champions, retro classics. These words are constantly repeated within the car world, but enthusiasts would undoubtedly associate them with these two cars, the BMW E30 M3 and the Toyota AE86. To some, they may seem overrated, but to many, there is no denying their historical motorsport significance, capabilities, and fame. While these two cars may seem worlds apart in the eyes of their diehard fanatics, they share key similarities. They are both powered up front by naturally aspirated four-cylinder motors. They both send power down a five-speed manual gearbox. But most importantly... They are rear-wheel drive. Truly, a perfect recipe. While the E30 M3 may be the heavyweight champion in its touring car days, the Japanese drifter had proven its might on the same turf. The 1986 British Touring Car Championship witnessed the AE86 with its 1.6 liter participating in C-Class. The 1986 season was dominated by former Redditch milkman Chris Hodges with the 1600cc Twin Cam Toyota. By dominating his class, Chris Hodgetts gathered the points to win overall driver's championship in the 8-6. Hodgetts continued into the 1987 series. But the reigning champion has on the outside of him there, Tiffany Dell with a new front wheel drive Corolla, and is trying desperately to find a way by. This is the braking area, coming up under the bridge, and he snatches back the place. Through that box, over the curb, on two wheels, back down again. The wheel stayed down as he comes out of the second part of the new woodcut. 1987 also saw the entry of the E30 M3 in a class of its own, literally. But Hodgetts would again dominate his class and win the championship. However, in 1988, Chris Hodgetts would say goodbye to his trusty little Corolla and participate in the Toyota Supra. By then, the M3 had made its influence on the European series and became widespread in the BTCC, dominating its class, races, and the championship. With its mass domination and victories, the M3 would leave its mark in history. The BMW E30 M3. Like many of you out there, I've always like read about it, heard about, and just always dreamt about how great this car is and here I am I've been dying to drive this thing for so long and first impressions I love it it lives up to its hype now I I'm a diehard fan of the you know not too much power rear-wheel drive somewhat light and just well-balanced kind of car and no driver aids just a pure mechanical simple engineering I love it the suspension on this car is completely stock this car is mostly stock and oh my god it's just so dialed in what I love about it is, it's just so comfortable, it's so refined, it's so civilized. The suspension is, I don't know how to put it, but it's perfect. You get, there's barely any roll. It's, you know, it handles amazingly, yet it's just so comfortable. We are on this dirt road the other time, or well, later you'll see, we're on the dirt road and it just cushions up all the little bumps and it makes you, well, encourages you to go faster. There's no scary feeling. Everything is just so comfortable. Everything's just, you know, in tune. Now the throttle, the amazing, brilliant S14 motor with its ITBs, you know, just you have all the response. It's just there, naturally aspirated. What more could you ask for? It's just such an amazing feeling. So right now we're on like this countryside back 
road. It's like a dirt rally stage. It's like you really feel the grip go and feel the balance of the car once the grip's gone and like speed limit speeds. <laughs> it's so much fun. This thing's great. To the steering it's got that 90s kind of got to turn it a little bit for it to you know get anywhere so it's not as quick as I personally like it to be but you do get plenty of feedback for you know power steering so the AE86 this is a very special A86 in the sense that it's my 86. I absolutely adore this thing. So what is it like to drive? Well, the fact that it's mine, I've tuned it up to everything the way I want it to feel. The steering rack is manual off an AW11. It's much quicker tight and it just gives me more angle now I normally have this thing set up for autocross and in between drift but it's mostly leaning towards drift so with the caster and the camber that it has right now the steering is a little bit on the heavy side it, it doesn't really make much of a difference apart from comfort I keep telling myself just to man up Those of you who follow me and subscribe to my channel would know that this isn't the original 4AG. It has the 4AGE blacktop 20 valve. Yes, that's a four cylinder, five valves per cylinder. Uh, they originally come off the AE111 uh, Turinos 11s, only sold in Japan. And it's only got like a few horsepower more, 10 to 15 more horsepower than the 16 valve. It's not as much power as the E30. Now you hear journalists always going on about how linear the curve is with the BMW's engine. This engine is very, well, it's more peaky, yet when it climbs onto the cam, it isn't as sudden as you think. It's definitely not linear. It's more of like a upwards curve. Power. And here's the power, here's the power. Both cars have a very raw feeling, but this this is more of like a brute, more of like a, a thrasher. You can be really hard on the 8.6, and it's very forgiving as well. Now, most people would like would think that since this car is used very often for like drifting, that it'll just be sliding all over the place. That's actually not true. It has a tendency to understeer into corners. The truth is, since it's very light, it really likes to grip. You really have to push it to get it sideways. And when you do lose it in the corners, you can just catch it. It's just right there. 